He is a renowned HR professional. The two decades of experience committed to an adding value to team, organization, and enhancing individual and group capabilities by developing an engaging environment to facilitate delivery of effective service and value. Having completed his CBPM from David Ranji, Mr. Chatri started his career with Bandit. Currently, he heads the HR functions at Airbus India. Prior to joining Airbus, he was the Texas and General Motors. Ladies and gentlemen, it's our privilege to present Mr. Suraj Chatri, Director HR at Airbus. Let me request Mr. Suraj Chatri to deliver the keynote address for today.
the support of the top management should absolutely be there because when things start changing, they will be the first people that will feel uncomfortable. They will be the first people that will feel uncomfortable and then get back to you or stall in subtle ways where they would not want what you have started to continue. The good thing about digitalization is once you've started it within your organization, you don't need any inertia to push it or to stop it. It goes on and it grows. So be careful if you are not ready for digitalization in your organization. Don't start it because you will end up in a bigger mess than you were. And it's a journey like I told you. And it's all about, when you look at the details, it's all about more empowerment. It's all about, when I'm talking about more empowerment, I'm talking about where does the decisions happen. The decisions happen at the lowest level between the groups and the departments. But actually, realistically, the CEO of the organization would take a decision which actually affects these groups four or five levels down and they should be the guys that should be taking the decision. So how can you, by empowering them, give them also the authority to take decisions but at the same time ensure that the decisions that they take are coordinated in such a way that it does not have a large impact or if they take any decisions that they can fail fast and come back if there is a mistake. And it's a culture where you have to get into it. It's all about mindset. Even though tools do matter. And I'm a great fan of Anand Schwarzenegger. How many of y'all have seen the Terminator series? A few of the guys. Okay. Uh, remember Anand, every movie at the end says something. I'll be back. And that scares me because that's technology that will be back. And every time he's back, he comes much smarter, much more agile, stronger, and much more digital savvy. So that is what fears the fear that I have personally. But remember one thing. Once you empower the organization, you make it flatter, you make it simpler, then it's all about innovation and experimentation. All the few examples that I will give you in the future is examples. We've got 750 projects that we are working all across the organization to see how we can change our way of working, how smart and agile and adaptive we can become. And, and it's in various things. I'll give you a few examples later on. But that's what I mean by empowerment. Give the authority to the people down below where it matters the most. More accountability. It's not the CEO taking all the decision and the money and the credit for everything. But if you give the ownership of a lot of things into the hands of the employees, and that's where we've come up with a big concept within our organizations called trust-based teams. And probably if I have time, I'll talk to you all about that. But it is also about development. What we have said earlier, we used to think, fine, we make a bell curve, and on the one side of the bell curve, we will have people who need improvement, right? Or probably people that we want to move out of the organization. On the other side, likewise, we will have guys who used to call talent, high potential, great employees. We've transitioned from that mindset, which is very difficult, into a mindset where learning will be available for everyone. The same set of tools, the same set of workshops, but you have to take the initiative and then they would be defined mechanisms in place that you yourself can assess yourself on and then grow in the organization. <coughs> so you are also shifting a lot of accountability from the hands of managers, and HR into the hands of the employees directly and making them accountable for a lot of things. You might wonder if I'm speaking, all that he's talking, he's not talking about what HR should do. Probably I'll address that at the end. If I don't, please remind me. 
Thirdly, it's about collaboration. What we learn within our organization is we have five divisions, helicoptering is to do stuff separately, UAV separately, uh, commercial separately, defense separately, satellite and communication used to do it separately. What we did is we combined all their different platforms and today we have something called the hub where every one of the 1,000 140,000 employees across the globe have access to. We made them all come into one area where they would interact with. When I'm talking about collaboration, what we've done is internally within the organization, everyone is encouraged to make profiles of their own abilities, about the strengths that they are working on, and that today is accessible to anyone and everyone. So even if, so there comes the cliche of if he's a good man, if he's a good employee with me, I will hide and protect him and encourage him to grow within my organization. Goes for a toss because if he's good for you, he's accessible to any other organization, department and country all over the world. So that is what we were talking about. Taking it a little bit further, why did we start? The reason we started is, when we did our regular Monday Gallup surveys, every time they came, the employees came back and told us, give us more accountability, give us more this, give us more that. What did we do? We did a small thing, tweak here, tweak there, and then again expected that next Gallup survey after one year, we would get better results. Every time they told us these things. But this time we said, let's take it seriously and look at how HR can play an enabling role to support what the organization is doing. We did not change the departments or the functions, but we only said if there are nine technologies that the organization is going to focus on for the future, let us HR work towards enabling these nine competencies to succeed. And what should we do so that we can provide an environment which is collaborative, where people are more accountable, and where people feel more empowered to do their job. So that's how uh, the journey started. So what we did is, we did not change the departments like I told you, but we realigned ourselves to say, let's focus on only four quadrants of recognize, develop, uh, and resources, that one RES has gone bigger, that's resources, and align. And we said, let's keep the principle, what you don't see in the small, is being agile, having uh, highly engaged employees, and a diverse workforce. Let HR work towards to see how we can, in these functions, focus on these three parameters only. So say for example, when we looked at resources, we said, let everything, let all employees be available on the hub. So you have access, so if I go in today and I want to look at anyone's profile of what he has done, what abilities he has, what competencies he has, so what we did at the back end is from the competency matrix, we pulled up data which can now be visible to all the managers across. Then we said, let's make it more collaborative. We said, if there are different projects, if there are different groups, if there are different self-made, I would say, units or hashtags that you want to participate in, be free, open up, interact, collaborate, by which even to the extent we went and said, fine, when you're doing your PNB or your mid-year or your annual review, scrap all of that. The objectives that you get, you will get after discussing in a team. So the mindset itself of individual contribution went away. And we said, when you are looking at setting up the objectives itself within the organizations, do it as a team. And what I'm not talking about is, of course, the tool. And what I'm not talking about is the support that HR gave towards this. So what happens is 
from the very start itself, when you have a particular objective, you would have company objectives that flow in, you would have your group objectives that flow in, and you would have your own objectives. And the sense of being responsible for setting up your own objectives obviously would be much higher. Then we said there are projects that your boss will decide. Normally in a PND cycle what happens is your boss decides on how good or bad you are at the end of the year. But probably your boss is not the only person that you have worked with. And then comes the aspect of 360 degree. How did we include it is we demarcated the objectives and said the objectives could be fulfilled any time from the 1st of January to the 31st of December. Let's see if we finish one objective, can we evaluate that objective itself? How do we do that? You go out to your stakeholders, get a feedback about how you did work, what, uh, how impressive it was, and then finally, the boss just acts like a media which confirms all the data that you have generated yourself from the work that you have done and rate those objectives. Moving further, I just want to step into the next uh, slide. We are also looking at how variable pay can be associated and broken up and say if you have already met up 50% of your objectives in the first three months, why do you have to wait till the end of the year to get paid for that and things like that. So we are even, even looking at uh, aspects like that. When we are talking uh, align, it is again the group objectives being together and those are the things not only on the qualitative but also on the quantitative side that we are talking about. How can I contribute not only to my work but also to the work of others. That's where the hashtags, the expert communities uh, and things have developed. And you would be surprised when we set this up how many of them thought it was a great idea and they never could interact on a common platform with folks across the five divisions. It's scary in a part because now you realize that they are a lot of people in the organization working on the same subjects and you know where I'm heading in HR. But at the same time what happened is you could learn from the expertise of one another just by bringing them together in one collaborative platform. Benefits, we said fine, end of the day, it is up to the employee. We, we talk about flexi benefits in India, but we took it to an extent even further and we said, take the whole compensation, if an executive gets a car, value the car and ask the executive what does he want. Does he want the car or he wants a vacation for the same amount? And not only the executive, but every individual employee could do that. Because you do not know. The difficulty we have in HR, I sorry, I can't speak on your behalf. The difficulty I have in HR in the past 25 years that I've worked in is, it's very difficult to satisfy the needs of each and every employee by one tailor-made policy. So we took that concept and took it to the next level and said, how can I give you the authority to decide what you want, if you want only 10% as a compensation because you come from a royal background, great, put the rest 90% into buying a Merc and having a driver and, and things like that. So that is where, still not got it in India, even in the globe, but that's where we are heading in the new ways of working. What, you, what we are thinking further also is that we do have assessment steps to ensure that you, know, you have the right capabilities and the competencies that you can move further. But moving further, further, forward, we are thinking, we will give you the tools, you run the analysis, you come back to HR and say, hey, this is what I did, this is what my development plans were, this is what I have worked on, this is where I think I am, this is what the assessment tells me, this is what my 360 tells me, I am ready for a promotion, let's talk about it. So that the hand, the, the ability for your development lies with the employees itself.
other examples are just you'll be wondering what system we use. We are on birthday. And power stone is power stone on demand is for the learning. We've even removed the process of the manager approving your training. You have your own budget, you have a thousand euros, spend it the way you want to, but we've still not gone to an extent where some of my colleagues even have training outside, you can do your training in fine arts and music, we've not gone there, but we've gone to an extent where we say, as far as it is related to your work, you've got this amount, use it the way you want to. Tomorrow, don't come back and say, everyone else went for a training, I couldn't. And, and what we are doing is we've taken this, we've taken the tool as an enabler like I was talking earlier and today not only is it available on your computer in office but it's even available on your iPad and it's even available on your iPhone or whichever phone you have. A smart, has to be smart, person may be dumb but the phone has to be smart for you to access uh, our tools and you can use it anytime. And you can in fact log into that and make that a start point of any work that you want to do. Today if I have to do uh, a review of the people, just a click of a button, a few parameters I fill in and I can get the entire results and present. And I remember when we used to have people development discussions, we used to prepare for weeks together that every data of the employee is correct, that we've got right uh, people in the organization, levels, etc. Today, just at the click of a button, we can do all those things. That's what I wanted to talk about. But in summary, I would like to say it is all about the mindset and the different ways of working that we in HR need to support and encourage people to move. No one person can transform the whole organization. No one team can transform the whole organization. No one project can transform the whole organization. You can't do it in one year. We've taken the step within our organization from three to five years. That is when the transformation would be probably complete. We do not know if in five years what we are putting in place is completely different. This is just uh, our guests and only time will tell whether we will be capable and competent or not. So what happens is what we are trying to do is trying to appreciate that individuals are unique but at the same time, but at the same time recognize that you would have common sets of values within the organization acceptable to these individuals that can drive the organization further. Strangely, a lot of initiatives that we've got today is bottoms up and not from the top. We've got a value exercise that we're doing where we've taken the feedback from the employees and said what are the values, the top five values you would like to have. A few values we said you don't get to choose like integrity, but the others we said what are the five. Then we rolled it down and workshops all over the world involve these employees and today we've come up with the five sets of values which we define and then we will make it specific and the first thing that we've rolled out is moving forward how from the top we can express what can the executives at the top do to express these values and their commitment to these values. We are working on new empowered organizational models. We've got about 60 teams that are experimenting on different ways of working and as and when these successes come up, we will execute and implement that into the DNA of the organization. So, I wish you that you have a good day today. I don't want to exceed my 15 minutes because uh, then you'll be sitting till 8 o'clock here. Uh, but one thing, I have a dream, probably before I retire, that might shock a lot of you all. And that's what I'm saying, I'll talk about HR at the end. I have a dream probably that before I retire, that there will be no HR department at all existing. Absolutely. Why? It's not because HR is not important. It's 
not because that we do a lousy job, like Ram Sharan says, but because I feel the way we are moving, it would become an integrated part of every individual, every team, and every manager. We can be a key, a key account manager or kind of imbibed within the team of an organization, but I don't think so. We will be successful and we'll be moving forward if we think we are going to be a department and dictate or mandate or run things, rather be a part of different teams and let them run with HR by and large. Hope you don't kill me for that. Thank you very much. Thank 
HR is a function for this all. The importance of HR will never, never, never go away. It will be all the more better because I can honestly tell you if you are in marketing or sales, taking care of HR within the organization, they will take better care of you than you are in HR department. <laughs> Thank you so much for that.